we're going to honor now and confer a Lifetime Achievement Award on a very, very special person dear to us at Heyday, Greg Saras, the longtime chairman of the Federated Indians of Great and Rancheria. Greg's accomplishments and achievements uh, will be on offer, as well as Greg himself. He and I sat down together a couple of weeks ago to record this for this evening in a conversation we had at his home. And the whole thing was filmed by the great Cody Lusich, a Native American film director who for many years now has been working on a documentary to uh, document Standing Rock, a brilliant, brilliant filmmaker. To introduce Greg, we turn to his longtime friends, Mickey and Carol Hart. Mickey Hart, you know, because he's the drummer for The Grateful Dead. Carol is the former parks director for the region in Sonoma County. Together, they've consented to introduce their friend and ours, Greg Saris. Hi, I'm Carol Hart. And I'm Mickey Hart. And uh, we're here to talk about our incredible friend, Greg Saris. That's right. To me, you have a casino and you have a hotel and you work so hard and you take all this abuse to do it. And you, you know, you'd be totally within your rights to just say, we're going to keep the money. We're not going to participate with you community. You didn't treat us well, whatever. It's the total opposite. They cannot, Greg and the tribe cannot do enough for this community. It is, it's, it's, and it's beyond this community. It's UCLA, it's the Smithsonian, but here in Sonoma County, it's just a really unheralded flow of support whenever it's needed, whether it's to fire victims, whether it's to parks, to environmental education, to school kids, to playgrounds. People have no idea what has happened as a result of the leadership of Greg and the tribe. Yes, outreach is outstanding. He really, uh, he looks for the right places to, uh, to invest uh, his time and uh, his people love him. And that you can tell a lot about a person by the people he's with and the people he employs. One of the things that I would like to talk about and probably Mickey would, is that within Greg, you have this person who is really totally soft. I mean, I hate to reveal that, but in his core, he is such a good, sweet, soft person, but wrapped around that is this total like steel. <laughs> and so, when people attack the tribe or what they're trying to do, it's like this man of steel comes out, you know, and you've seen it. Yes. And that's what you need today. You need somebody who, who's smart, who's powerful, and um, who's got empathy and compassion. And that's really a, a couple of good words for, for Greg. Okay, one. Okay. You ready? Congratulations, Congratulations, Greg. And now there's going to be a great video, a short video about Greg that everyone's going to love. Enjoy. In Central California lies a very special place where the mountains and forests meet the ocean. And like those crashing waves, relentlessly beating upon the shoreline, bringing new energy to the coast. This place is home to a group of people who have lived here since time immemorial. They were artists, musicians, storytellers, and caretakers of the land. They are the coastal Miwok and the southern Pomo tribes. And to this very day, they're still here and leading the way to a brighter future. If it were a job where I had to sit at a desk, if it were something else that was routine, I think I'd feel old and tired and want to retire. But there's so much, uh, you know, and it's, it's almost like a trick of fate, Steve, because I feel as if with all the opportunity now coming from what's happened with the casino and what the opportunity I have politically and all these things that are happening, um, <laughs> can't stop now. You know, we're not gonna let you stop, so. Along with his work as a professor at Sonoma State, writer of novels and short stories, 
Greg Saris is the longtime chairman of the Federated Indians of Great Rancheria and head of the tribe's hugely successful casino and hotel, making possible the tribe's deep commitment to issues of environmental and social justice. Why didn't this happen to me when I was 24? Probably because I was so arrogant and awful I would have wrecked it. Well, Steve, for me, seeing you brought back the world that I missed so much. Oh my God, I'm reconnected to writing, book reviews, my books being reviewed in the LA Times, um, all of the, the, the things that I had worked so hard for in my life and that mattered to me. I have a PhD in modern thought and literature. I was gonna be a professor and a writer the rest of my life. And again, I didn't know it was a child about my Indian heritage. That's the other thing. I, the record said I was half, my father was Mexican. I never wanted to operate a casino. I wanted to help my dad's people get our rights back. So I co-authored a bill, which I got through Congress. President Clinton signed it December 27th, 2000, two weeks before he went out of office. Today, we're the last tribe in the country to be restored by an act of Congress, as far as I know. I thought that was enough. I thought that would be the end of it and we would have some rights back. Well, we got our rights back and the right to have land, but no money to get the land. So folks began to bat around the C word, not cancer. And I thought, oh no, don't come near me. Um, and of course they did. And my non-Indian mother said to me, Greg, you can't leave your father's people now. Uh, there's so many good examples of bad examples where Indians get ripped off. Guilt, 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 I'll do it. But I sat down with the tribal council, Steve, and I said, I'll lead this effort, this campaign, only if we are very clear that the, the casino, the resort, our business will enable us to have a significant platform for social justice and environmental stewardship, only and that we share that this operation is something that benefits Indian and non-Indian alike. I'll do this if what we're doing will be transformative. Suddenly I became the bad Indian. I was the wagon burner where with the books and movies, I was Sonoma County's native son. All of a sudden, now with a casino, I was the devil. Environmentalists didn't want it. Residents of the Sonoma County didn't want it because of all the stereotypes. It's gonna change the face of Sonoma County, will never be the same. And it did sound antithetical. A casino for social justice and environmental stewardship. That suddenly these poor, poor native people, Indian people, are gonna have money and power. And it would, could potentially be a shift in paradigm. Seven years after the casino has opened, um, we have in fact become transformative. We've given more money to the city of Rohnert Park and to Sonoma County than any other organization in the history of the county and or city. We've given over $120 million to date to both those, or to those organizations combined. We've provided 33, 32, 33 million dollars in charity to uh, political campaigns, scholarships, issues that we felt are important in terms of environmental stewardship. We've created partnerships with the county to co-manage parks. We've done so many precedent-setting things that isn't just about Indians or our things, but working together and using our resources to make a healthier, more sustainable world for all of us. Where did you come upon this uh, socially enlightened uh, awareness that uh, this, this spirit of generous giving back to the community and wanting to, to raise up everybody? For so much of my life, I didn't feel safe. I was scared. I was having to compromise in many ways, as many people do, and being adopted and being, you know, living in different homes and things. Everything I want, have done in my life, starting with the teaching, Steve, and the writing, was something that I wanted to do to help make a place for people to feel safe, to feel home, to feel that they could be an agent in their own life, that they could have agency in their own lives, to create 
in my place of employing people, uh, working with people, to create a place of safety so that people know they have options and that they're free to exercise those options. I hope that what I do is create examples of those who can be sensitive and those who come from difficult backgrounds can use those backgrounds as medicine to heal and doctor others in everything they do. And like those waves ceaselessly beating upon the shoreline, Greg Saris remains devoted to the wisdom of the late Mabel McKay, the medicine woman and world-renowned basket weaver and prophetic dreamer whose remarkable life he chronicled in his book, Weaving the Dream. He asked her, what are we to do when the water dries up and everything burns? She said plainly, you live the best way you know how. What else? The Heyday Lifetime Achievement Award has been given in the past to such distinguished people as T.C. Boyle, Robert Shear, Daniel Ellsberg, and Barbara Dane. It is my high privilege and honor to confer that award upon Greg Saris, the chairman of the Federated Indians of Great and Rancheria. Please welcome me, welcome Greg, and join me and congratulate him, him this evening. Hello, I'm Greg Saris, Chairman of the Federated Indians of Great Rancheria. Uh, I'm overwhelmed uh, tonight with gratitude for this award, humbled by it. I, first of all, of course, want to thank Steve Wasserman Steve, I've known you a long time. This is a great moment we can share. Thank you so much. I also wanna thank Cody Lusich for the video. Um, and finally, I wanna thank all of the benefactors of Heyday and the supporters of Heyday over the years. It's such important work and it's amazing in, that in these times, um, a press such as Heyday can keep going and keep going strong. And it's only because of the support of the benefactors and so many of you who are watching tonight. Um, on behalf of Heyday, I really wanna thank you, uh, not just hardly for this award, but for your support over the years for Heyday. Um, I, I really, I don't really know exactly what I've done to deserve this award. I mean, I've published books and I'm very happy that the last book I published with Heyday is uh, won awards, it won a library, an independent library award, and it was put on the shelf of the California State Library. I'm proud of that. I'm also particularly proud and thankful of my tribe, the Federated Indians of Great Rancheria. Um, we've done remarkable things um, with the opportunities we've had and taken advantage of. Um, again, we are among the poorest people in Sonoma County. And uh, once we had our opportunity to have a business and have benefits, we have become a major platform for social justice and environmental stewardship to the tune of $120 million to the county for mitigation and then well over $30 million uh, to charity for those causes of social justice and environmental stewardship. And I wanna thank my tribal council and all I've worked with, they've made this possible. They've made my life and my work with Heyday possible. So um, I'm thankful for that and proud of that. But tonight I do want to say a few words about Heyday um, and the importance of Heyday. I'd rather talk about Heyday than myself. And um, Heyday, I mean, today, the way the world is going, um, as you know, we're in sort of dire straits. It's become sort of a cliche to say as much, particularly I would imagine amongst the crowd tonight. Um, but uh, heyday is a remarkable opportunity to be balm for that. Um, the problem, you know, as you know, we are moving faster and faster uh, in the world today. We're observing and reading less and less. 
observing and paying attention to the world and reading less and less, in my estimation, is a recipe for disaster or continued disaster. Heyday allows us, with all its wonderful books, to stop and listen and finally find hope again. I'm thinking of the political books. I mean, to so many of the books now that cover the life of uh, a former slave, Biddy Mason, uh, Japanese heroes, thing, books that are going to the schools and libraries, um, moving in ways, heyday moving in ways in broader ways, uh, even than it has in the past. And again, um, I think this work is so important. I think of the work of nature that Toby uh, Hoff, Kaufman just recently, his California Field Atlas, that allows us just to, uh, to sit in the evening or in the morning before you start sort of with your coffee to look over the drawings and the plants of all that's here. I also uh, can't forget news from native California. You know, I've often joked that uh, nobody knew there were California Indians until there were casinos. Uh, but Heyday has proved me false with the publication of News from Native California, which has been around for decades now and has kept news about Native California alive. Um, so uh, again, those kinds of things I'm grateful for. But again, when you think about the kinds of publications uh, regarding history and social justice, regarding nature that Heyday is doing, it is in a way to, it's been a way for us to stop and listen, to know that beauty is possible. And once you see and know that beauty is possible, it'll inspire all of us, I think, to hope and to have hope to stop and look and see it and want to preserve it for the future. And I think that is one of the main things uh, that why I love Heyday so much is that reading the books that Heyday puts out, the, the journals, um, it makes me think there's a lot to hope for, to be responsible for, and to keep seeing and enjoying. And for that, um, I want to really thank Heyday. And because of the work you do, and to have me honored in the way I am tonight, perhaps is the greatest honor that I could be recognized by an organization that cares so much about the things that I care about and hope for. So again, Steve and all the benefactors, my tribe, all of you here tonight, I'm honored, touched, and thank you so much. It matters.